Space debris is what we call the remnants of human activity in space. One of the most important activities we are currently involved in is together with space agencies, operators and other industry, we are working on the Zero Debris Charter, a document that outlines our ambitions and vision for the future. We're talking about the year 2030 and we want to make sure that by that time we are significantly more sustainable in our space activities than we are currently to date. At OHB we have the Space Debris Center of Competence. It's a interdepartmental working group that combines all the um, specialists and all the disciplines that are needed to make spacecraft sustainable. So we have analysts that know how to simulate what happens in orbit and what happens at end of life. We have people developing new technologies that will be needed in the future for zero debris platforms and we have those engineers that are implementing these techniques and technologies in our products, in our satellites. In order to avoid the formation, the creation, or to avoid other collision with spacecraft that are not working anymore, we make them re-enter on the Earth and we can do it in two ways, with a control and uncontrolled way. Of course, in terms of uh, propellant and then mass for the satellite, the uncontrolled strategy is the best option. So we do develop solution, doing tests on material. The most difficult part of the analysis is being able to simulate something that you don't have prediction about. You collect the data also from previous mission, you do your tests, you implement your results, you create your model, and then you get the results of your analysis. And according to those results, you build a real spacecraft that it's going to be launched into the space. The hardest part is being able with accurate hypotheses to predict what is really going to happen there. Design for Demise is a sort of a concept on how we build satellites to produce less space debris after re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. We're essentially looking at the materials that we use in day-to-day -day, uh, platform and payload uh, solutions and how they behave during re-entry. From that standpoint, we also have to consider how we can potentially make spacecraft better and more demisable. We have a range of specialties where we can focus on gaining the material data that we don't yet have or we don't sufficiently have. Whilst it's not exactly one-to-one -one, uh, testing compared to what we'd see during re-entry, it's as close as we can get on terra firma. And this dramatically helps us uh, achieve better understanding in what we do, what we use, and how we use it. Every project has its own space every mitigation plan. And we have a standard platform, which is called EOS, which is used for Earth observation missions. And it means that we basically take the core of every satellite and we can reuse many parts of it. And um, of course, this core has to be flexible to adhere to all the different requirements that we have for space debris mitigation. In practice, this means that the EOS platform has to be very reliable because after seven and a half years in the harsh space environment, we have to make absolutely sure that we can re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and do this very precisely so nobody gets hurt on the ground. In the future, of course, we have our platforms that we do have right now and we are developing them further so they are more demisable. And on the other hand, we are developing new platforms with the aim of uh, developing a zero debris platform, which means that we have full demisability and also we make sure that uh, no harm is done on the ground.